boom, it's another giveaway. This one is awesome. Check out what we're giving away for today's episode. You see this right here? It's hard to see on camera, but this is Rubber Bandits Resistance Bands, the best resistance bands you'll get anywhere. You're not just going to get this. You're actually going to get a whole bag of resistance bands, attachments, handles, all that stuff for free. We're going to send this to you for free. Here's how you can win a free bag of Rubber Bandits, different resistance levels, resistance bands, and their attachments. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment as the best comment among all the comments in the first 24 hours, we'll notify you, and then you win that free bag of resistance bands. By the way, the rest of you can get these resistance bands at the Mind Pump store, so you'll see the, the link right here. So go check that out. Also, one more thing before we start this podcast. We are running a sale on two of our most popular workout programs, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift are both 50% off. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy the show. You know, it's a question that we get often that I could totally relate to and I think uh, would be a good idea to, uh, to just communicate to. It's the following. Like, what would be a good workout plan if I like to work out every day? Or can I train my body every day and get great results? Or would I get faster results working out every day? So I'd like to address this particular question. Um, that I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen this. I love this idea. Yeah. I love this idea for an episode. Um, one, we've never done anything like this before. Two, we have no programs that are designed this way. But the truth is, and I talked about this uh, early on in the podcast, that I actually, I, I go to the gym seven days a week. Right now, I'm not like this. When I was consistently uh, training back when we were com I was competing, I was in the gym seven days a week. But the thing that I always had to communicate to people is like, seven days a week in the training doesn't mean that I'm like hammering the weights seven days a week. You have to modify intensity, and then I would focus on other things. And so I've, ha I've had a lot of questions about what that looks like. And so building a seven-day routine for the audience uh, and those that actually love going to the gym that, that often or exercising yeah. that often, this will be fun. Well, I do want to be clear to everybody, just so you know right out the gates, you are going to get a free seven-day-a-week workout program from this episode. So that's what we did. We put it together for you, and we're going to literally lay it out. So by the end of this uh, show, you're going to have a workout, seven-day-a-week workout. Now, here's what's important when you're working out. Actually, well, this is always important with your workouts, but it's especially important if you're doing if you're devoting this much time to exercise. The programming is key here. It is very easy when you're working out daily to overdo a certain component of your workout, which can cause joint pain, inflammation, or just cause overtraining, or cause too much of a stress response, uh, which will result in your body actually not building muscle, but rather losing muscle and setting itself up for more fat storage. Because when you're stressed, when your body senses too much stress, it wants to protect itself Two ways to do this. One is reduce its caloric requirements because for most of human history, <laughs> stress meant we didn't have enough food. And number two, improve its ability to store more body fat because body fat is an insurance policy against the most common form of stress for most of human history, which was not having enough food. The irony is that the more days that you're training in the gym, the more technical, the more challenging running your program is. Totally. Mm -hmm. If you're only lifting two to four days a week- Much you, more basic. It is more basic. And you can get away with the routine looking pretty similar. Mm -hmm. You could get after it the same, those two to three days every time you're training- and be okay as far as intensity, as far as what you're training. But you start getting seven days a weekend, the the frequency that you hit the, the muscle group, the intensity that you do it, the type of training you do every time in there, it gets more and more difficult, which the reason why I find that ironic is that I think people would think that, oh, seven days a week, the more I train, the more results I'll have or the, the better it will be for me. And no, I, I actually think the more you're in the gym, the more difficult it is to know how to program correctly so that you don't run into what you call the recovery trap where you're just kind of spinning your wheels all the time. Yeah, the irony with that is you're in the gym and uh, it's difficult to kind of program that. But all, but on the other end of that, the consistency is something that's a lot easier because when you break it up throughout the week and you're only there, you know, let's say two to three times, you know, during the week, it's really the motivation to, to keep that up to keep up that routine uh, tends to fall down quite a bit 
Well, this is exactly why I did it. So, and and Sal talks about this, right? Sal talks about, uh, you know, his consistency and like he knows that if I didn't train in the morning, I wouldn't be as consistent as I am. And so he's just, he's carved that time off. That's his time. Nothing gets in the way of that. This is how, what I felt about getting ready for shows was I had to decide like, this is my time. Like this is, I had, I had a very strict routine in order to be consistent and so I, I didn't like the idea of, oh, a three or four day a week training program where I've got three or four days where I'm potentially off or not going to the gym. I needed like, I know that every day and back yes, then yeah. it used to be 12. It's, it's to, dialed in. Yeah, 12 to two, I'm going to the gym. Nothing gets in the way of that. I built all the rest of my life around that time. So nothing got in the way. But I know that I can't go to the gym and train the same way 12 to two every single day, but I'm going to go to the gym and I found that it, I was easier. It was easier for me to stay consistent with with something this like that. This is, by the way, this is a re, this is a documented psychological phenomenon. So on one hand, working out every single day means that you have to carve out time every single day. On the other hand, it is easier to stay consistent because it's a daily routine. Mm -hmm. But you know, your drug manufacturers knew this a long time ago. So like for example, old school birth control pills for women, right? They'll they'll take the birth control. This is the old way of doing it. A lot of birth control now has changed. But in the past they would say, okay, take these birth control pills for X amount of days and then create an artificial period where you go off for seven days, you get your period, and then you go back on. Here's how they design the birth control pills. You take them every single day. Yeah, yeah. Seven sugar, of them are sugar pills. Are sugar pills. Right. Yeah. Why did they do this? It dramatically improved and increased the consistency because when people went off for seven days, had to remember to go back on, you would have people messing up their schedules. Mm -hmm. Now, supplement companies know this as well. There's a reason why supplement companies will often attach their product to a daily routine. Take this in the morning. Take this before bed. Take this with lunch. Things you do every single day because you're more, you're more likely to be consistent. So working out every day or carving time out every single day for a lot of people is actually easier to stay consistent I agree. than it would be to only have three or four days when you could say to yourself, well, I only, you know, I've already worked out twice. I don't think I'll work out tomorrow. Before you know it, it builds up and now you missed your workouts for the week and you got to start over the following week. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the components of what a seven day a week workout routine would look like. By the way, this routine is designed to maximize muscle building, performance, fat loss. Essentially, this is a routine that's essentially going to train your body to look really good and move really good. And we did it this way because most people watching this are probably in that category. They want to look really good. They want to perform really well. Um, and that's generally most people's yeah, goals. Yeah, it just right? sort of covers the broad base of you know getting that kind of functional strength, also building muscle, but like applying adequate recovery and you know implementing that so you have structure for each one of these days. So I, I love this too that we're doing this because when we started to piece this together, it looks very very similar to what my seven day routine is. And the and the first thing that we kind of agreed on is the first rule that I gave myself. So I knew the, one of the rules I said was okay. If I'm going to be in this gym six to seven days a week and I'm, I have a big goal. I'm trying to get on stage, do these things. I have to be careful that I don't overdo it. And so I had this hard rule of like, I would never allow myself to more than two really hard training days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by hard, I mean like compound lifts, high intensity type of training. Yeah, heavy weight going after it. Very yeah, demanding. I days. wanted to separate those out by a few. Obviously, I wouldn't go hard, hard back to back days. I want to give a, a couple days in between. I want two of them are like my intense training sessions where I'm going after the big major lifts, I'm getting after it really hard, and then the other days I'd have to modify around. Yeah, them. I agree with that 100%. I think if you're working out every day, two days a week hard is perfect for most people. Um, you want to center it, like Adam said, compound lifts. This is where you do your squats and your bench presses and your rows. This is when your rep range can be between 6 to 12. You're training at you know near failure. In other words, your, your sets, you're taking them to – you know, two reps before failure. So it's a very intense working set. You're doing about one exercise per body part uh, and about three sets per exercise. And typically you'll start with the large body parts and go down to the smaller ones. And, uh, you know, as we get through all of these points that we're going to make, I think, you know, we'll, we'll give you guys more specifics in terms of what that workout's going to look like. Ideally, uh, Adam said this, you want the two workouts, the two hard workouts to have some space in between them. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I were to do a week of this, my two hard workouts would be Monday and Thursday, for example. So Monday, hard, heavy workout. Then I'd do a couple other different workouts, which we'll get into on Tuesday, Wednesday. 
Thursday, another hard, heavy workout. So that's the first one. Here's the second piece that I think is very important. Well, let's let, let, actually let's address the why. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like why 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 not back to back? Why not three days in a row of hard intense lifting? Yeah. You you could you can definitely do three days a week of hard lifting, but not when you're working out seven days a week also, right? right? That's just too much for most people. If you're only working out three days a week, you could do three hard workouts, but not if you're working out every single day. Yeah, and and plus, we know what the research says. You talked about this in a recent episode that we there is a sweet spot. It's, there is. It's somewhere between nine to 20 sets. If you're doing six days a week of just based off the math that you just said of how many how many uh, sets you're doing for yeah. that most you're way beyond that. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're you're training the the volume that you're training at is way higher than what's needed, and the intensity level that you're potentially going after it in those days is is way more than what you need also. So then the body is just trying to recover this entire time rather than in, build instead of it building and adapting. So that's that is the reason why because someone might be going like, well, why? What if I feel good or why can't I just do three days or four days of hard training or just go like that all the time. It's like, again, and you you did this really well, Sally, the other day, is like what your body can handle is different than what is optimal for That's your body. Right. Yeah. So just because you can handle beating it up three or four days a week doesn't mean that's doesn't what's going to give you the most results. And for yeah. some reason, it's really tough for people to make that connection. Yeah, think, think, about, think about the temperature of your house, right? There's an ideal temperature that feels the best, and then there's an extreme heat and cold you can maximize, you, you can, can handle, tolerate. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like you want to live in a house that you can tolerate the, you know, the hundred and something degree weather? Of course not. The right dose will get you there the fastest. More than that, that's great that you can handle that. You're not going to get there any faster. At the least... You're just going to get there the same speed and you're just wasting time. But what's more likely is you actually slow down your progress because you're adding more stress to the body that's not uh, necessary. Now, why have the days in between that are other workouts? Because these are hard, heavy workouts. You would like to see yourself progress with strength mm -hmm. in these workouts. Back to back doesn't give you enough time typically uh, to give you the, 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 your body ability to adapt and build some strength. So and you want to have that space. And to that point, that's the reason why the, the next things that we're going to do in between are going to promote the recovery so that right. you can even get after it that yes. much harder on Thursday. Yeah. Now this next one, you know, Justin was adamant on and we all completely agreed, which is there should be one day a week, your workout should be devoted completely to mobility. Yeah. So you should literally do an, a one hour mobility workout and your goal in this workout is to increase your functional range of motion so what's functional range of motion okay so range of motion would be like how far someone could lift my leg up to to my head so how far can my hamstring stretch functional range of motion is how far can i stretch that hamstring while having strength and connection to it two very different things now imagine somebody putting you in a deep stretch mm. You don't have very much connection to that. If you had to move yeah. real quick, you'd probably tear your hamstring or injure yourself. So what we're looking for is functional range of motion, functional mobility, so you own all of these ranges of motion, redu reduces injury, and maximizes those hard workouts that we talked about earlier. Right. There's nothing passive about these days. And uh, you know, to address sort of a misconception that uh, this is sort of allotting a, a very like easy, nice, relaxing type of a, a workout. No, this can be something very challenging and, and intensive. Um, and, and you're actually like, you're working completely on a different focus. And that is to... Uh, uh, be able to really hyper connect to your central nervous system to be able to uh, have these like secondary type of muscles respond to protect the joints and so you know and also to to, to maintain certain posture and maintain optimal positions in the joints so that way when you go back to your compound lifts you have an increase in performance now in a perfect world uh, this mobility day looks very individualized for the people right so in a perfect world it's impossible to do though with how many right. people are watching this right now, right? Exactly. So, uh, and our goal of this episode was to give, you know, the audience something tangible that they can go and do themselves and start to apply to see, you know, what kind of results they get from it. So, a great place for the audience to go start start at is our primeprowebinar.com. It's absolutely free. That's your workout. That's right. I take you through yep. 50 minutes, literally follow that routine for this day. 
So for now, and, and what's great about that is, as I pretty much address from the yeah. the ankle you, you to the neck. You address the grossest offenders. Yeah, that's right. You, you pick the stuff that probably eighty to ninety percent of people are going to benefit. And that's from. why I did it. I I figured I'd put together a routine that I knew would benefit damn near everybody that goes through. It'll benefit everybody that goes through it, and some people it'll be tremendously uh, beneficial. Now, as you get better and better at this, or if you somebody you're somebody who owns Prime Pro and you understand what mobility things you should be doing, you've already figured out your areas of dysfunction and you know what areas in, are helping you the most. You know, stick in that. But for the, the the listener who is not familiar with putting together a mobility day and what would that look like, that routine is perfect for you to start. So start with that and follow that for the beginning. Now, what's good about this is when you follow this routine, because here's the deal with mobility. For most people watching and listening, doing it right is actually quite challenging if you've never done it before. Because what we're used to is stretching. What we're used to is, oh, I'm going through a movement. But intention is so important with mobility work. And it's so valuable to have someone coach you through the mobility movements while you're doing them so you really understand how to make them effective. At primeprowebinar.com, that's exactly what Adam does. He's literally coaching you. So you're watching him and he's coaching you through the movements. So to give you an example, it's like if I, and this is not a mobility movement. I'm using a silly example. Let's say I put my chest in a deep stretch. I have to, with my intention, now that it's in the stretch, connect to the chest, connect to the rhomboids, connect to the rear duct, connect to all the muscles that support that new range of motion so that I own that deeper range of motion. So similarly, what Adam does is he takes you through all these different, very valuable movements, and then he coaches you through the movement. And trust me, okay, this is not like a, you know, a Sunday stretch session where you're playing music and you're out in the sun, you're relaxing. You're going to sweat. No, you're going to sweat. It's going to be tough. You're going to feel this. It is a workout, but the, the goal of the workout is to improve your functional mobility. Now, I want to sell this to my my young audience that's listening that doesn't have joint pain, feels like they move optimally yeah. and perfect already, and that are going to want to go, oh, well, I don't really need that, so I'm going to throw another day of weight yeah. training in here. I don't care what you... And what I want to sell you on is that it isn't just for, you know, improved mobility and movement and joint support, everything that Justin was selling and telling you. It's also going to facilitate recovery. Yes. 100%. So it's also going to support that high intensity, heavy compound lifting day that you just did before. This is going to help speed up recovery for you to build more muscle and prepare you for Thursday again to get after it. Yes. And it's going to make your compound heavy lifts more effective. You know, if you can if you can imagine a point scoring system that's awarded to exercises and ranks them in terms of their value, right? So let's say a squat is a hundred, right? Hundred points, maximum, you know, benefit from a barbell squat. That doesn't mean that you're going to derive a hundred points of value from the squat. It only means that that's the max potential of the squat. Now, what determines that potential? Your ability to connect, your ability to move, your range of motion that you have function over. That's what makes that squat worth a hundred. What makes you better at getting closer to that maximum benefit of the barbell squat? Your functional mobility. So doing these functional mobility days will make your other workouts far more effective. All right, here's the third piece uh, that we think should be included in your workout. You should focus on getting a pump about two days a week. So two days a week, you're working out in the gym or at home. The goal isn't heavy high intensity, like with the compound lifts, you're not, you're not working on functional mobility, like with the mobility day, your goal is to get a pump and add some more volume and frequency while minimizing the damage that you produce to the body, right? Cause you don't want to cause too much more damage, but I still want to send a muscle building signal. Yeah. This is where bodybuilding, some of the things you learn in bodybuilding can become, you know, quite valuable. Yeah. And this is smart because too, in terms of practice and teaching your body, you know, to, to be able to express that muscle contraction, you know, more frequently, you're going to get better at a lot of these lifts and your muscles are going to respond accordingly, but not the, the key is the appropriate amount of intensity. And that's something that we scale uh, through this process. And we're able to kind of focus in on that a little bit more, you know, to the individual group. So we're, we're a little bit more single joint focus. So point. what this is starting to shape up to look like is Monday we have these hard compound lifts. So this is the mm -hmm. day we get after it, the big lifts. We're, we're more strength training focused. Day two, we've got an hour of mobility that we're doing, which is you follow the Prime Pro. 
Now, day three, we're moving into what we would call like a focus type of session where we're doing more isolation types. So this is like cable push downs and bicep curls yeah. and lateral raises and a lot of movements like that. Very similar to anybody who's bought or gone through our MAPS aesthetic program. We have what are called focus days that complement the foundational days. The compound lifting that you're doing on, on Monday, that would represent like our foundational days that we build in most of our programs. What we're talking about right now would be like our focus days where you are. You're, and your rep range, close, their higher rep range. Yeah, so 15 to 20. That's right. We're up to and 15, 20. We're searching up. The mindset's different now too, right? So when you go into this, mm -hmm. it's not the same as at the, the, the when you're going after the six rep range and we're doing compound lifts, we're trying to move weight. We're trying to move weight and the intensity and the and the focus is completely different. When you go into the isolation days, now it's about, it's about getting the pump. Yeah. Yeah. It's about time it's under squeeze, tension, controlling it. it, slowing the repetition down, doing these uh, isolation exercises and training that way for this entire hour. Yeah, and I did that this morning, in fact. I came in and my body's feeling a little stiff and I needed to go lighter. And so what you would have seen me doing is I'm going much lighter and I'm doing more isolation exercises. So like instead of doing a heavy bench press, I might do some cable flies. I may do a dumbbell chest press, but light where I'm focusing on the squeeze, right? So higher reps, lighter weight, focus on getting the pump. And you're doing again, one exercise per body part uh, for about uh, three sets. Uh, now the next day, this one's also very important. And this is what we would call a functional day. So functional exercises tend to involve the entire body, and you tend to move into different planes as you're doing this exercise. What do, what do I mean by planes? Okay, so if I do a curl, I'm moving in one plane, right? I'm not twisting. I'm not, you know, moving behind me. I'm just moving in one plane. Functional movements tend to get you to move in different ways all the way through to get your body to communicate. So to get your upper body to communicate with your lower body, to get your left to communicate with your right, to activate what's called proprioceptive ability. Where's my body in space, right? So like a good example of a functional exercise that would fall in this category would be like a Turkish getup. Mm -hmm. You do a Turkish getup, it's not a shoulder exercise per se. It's not a core exercise per se. It's not a leg exercise per se, although all those muscles are activated and more. But what it's doing is it's getting the whole body to move and communicate uh, together. And this is important because our joints are capable of so many different angles and, and has so much range. And if we're not expressing that, then our body starts to sort of downregulate and starts to prune off the abilities that we have. And this is just trying to, to reinforce, you know, a lot of the, the, the capabilities that we already have. So we need to be able to train that and, and plan that out. So, uh, you know, I can get them to respond appropriately, uh, going back into these, these regular barbell type lifts. Well, it, yeah, it also, it also lends itself so well to getting great at the compound lift. So going back to yes. these, these intense days that were are your biggest bang for your buck or what are probably going to build the most amount of muscle on you, you get really good at a Turkish get up and you go back and see what your overhead press or what your uh, squats look like. You'll see that that movement- There's will, carryover. Yeah, there's carryover to that. And that's why I like movements like the Turkish get up because in order to articulate that entire movement it's broken in like eight parts and components mm -hmm. and you literally from your toes to your neck everything is being stim is being stimulated and in order to do it properly and really well it promotes good shoulder mobility it promotes good hip mobility good trunk stability but the ability to rotate in multiple planes you have good control mm -hmm. through that entire thing then you go over and do something that is actually a lot easier as far as the amount of movement that's involved like a squat and you'll see how much carryover is into that. well and this is so important because in real life you're faced with all kinds of like weird unique angles in uh, if you're you're super strong in the gym, that's great. But now that's going to be your your hardwired response. So it, let's say like now you have just a little bit of rotation in there. How does your body respond? It might over respond uh, the wrong way, and so this is going to help to teach it to uh, support your joints, but also maintain your strength. And it also makes a lot of sense to structure it this way, where it's like a full functional day in a routine like this. 
because what I don't want to do, because I just did a focus session, I've already had a heavy compound lifting lifting day. I don't want to tax individual muscles the same way. I want to get a full body workout. I want to promote yes. blood flow. I want to promote recovery. I want to work on control, stability, range of motion, get stronger. All those things are going to come from this functional mm -hmm. day, but I'm not going to get my triceps hella sore from a Turkish get up. No, your, no. your shoulders aren't going to get hella sore or your legs are going to get hella sore from a movement no, like you're, that. No, you're, you're not stressing the muscles as you are as much as you're stressing the communication between the muscles and the movement, which benefits all the other workouts and has value in and of itself. I remember when we first started uh, the podcast, you know, Justin was definitely a very functional, he's still, right, very functional training guy. And he convinced me to give a windmill a try. Now, I, I've always been able to deadlift a lot of weight, very strong in that exercise. I went to try a deadlift and I couldn't even get, excuse me, a windmill, and I couldn't even get in the position. It's like my body didn't know that movement. So I'm like, I got to practice this, right? So I started practicing the windmill. And I got to the point where I could do it with like a 70-pound kettlebell. Not a ton of weight, but huge improvement from not being able to do it at all. I was blown away that my deadlift went up. Yeah. I was stronger in my deadlift. Now, I could break it down and be like, oh, my QL got worked yes. better and things are stretching in my hip. But the reality is when I did my deadlift, I just felt more stable mm -hmm. in my lift. And I didn't expect that. I didn't do the windmills to get a better deadlift. I did the windmills because I couldn't do that movement. And I, you know, kind of freaked me out. But the side effect was I got better at my deadlift. So it's it, there's lots of value for muscle building uh, and, you know, strength performance. So even if you're not a functional, you know, person, you don't really care, you just want to build muscle, one day a week of this, one day a week of this, you're going to still touch all the muscles of your body. So you're still sending somewhat of a muscle building signal but it's going to make your body move better and communicate better with itself. So when you do those other lifts, those heavy lifts that are building muscle, you're just better at them. And I want to stress this to the audience that th this will be new to is fall in love with the process of improving the movement more than trying to prove that you can do more weight. Yes. 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 So just because I could, I'm strong enough to go out there right now and grab a 60 to 100 pound kettlebell and hold that and do a Turkish get up, I know that I won't be able to move through the whole exercise beautifully. And that's the goal on these functional days is to really improve the movement of it, not necessarily, oh yeah, I could do a 100 pound kettlebell when I do a Turkish get up. It's like, yeah, but if it looks like shit, who cares? Yeah. So when you do these functional exercises that yeah. we're gonna lay out for you, the goal is to get great at the movement. Let that, so, Notice that all these days have different mental focus. That's the challenge of seven days a week. Seven days a week, every time you go in the gym, you got to switch your mindset. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be the same. You're not going in with the same mindset all seven days. Each day, you have to kind of change like, okay, this is the focus today. Today, it's all about mobility. It's all about the intention of the movement. And it's about connecting really well and moving moving controlled and slow. When I'm going after compound lifts, I'm getting after it. I want to move as much way as I can. When I'm going into these uh, isolation days, when I'm doing more of the pumping exercises, it's about time and retention and control and form and feeling a pump in the muscle. Now I'm on functional day. Functional day is all about the movement. Can I make this movement beautiful? Can I make it look perfect? Organizing and putting it all together. Yeah. So, and that yeah. doesn't mean that you can't scale up or progressively overload. But the goal is the movement. That's right. Perfect the movement first before you start to add load to it. Totally. Don't add load to a crappy movement pattern. Right. That totally defeats the entire purpose. All right. So this last point that uh, we're going to make is one that now comes from our collective wisdom. Now I know I know I use that word to replace the word that you know old because we've been around for a while. <laughs> but the truth is, we've trained people for decades. We've been working out ourselves for decades, and this last piece is extremely valuable. Don't leave it out, and don't worry. We'll we'll sell to you why it's so valuable, and that's this. One day a week, you're going to do a one hour hike or walk outside. That's yes. the important part. You got to do it outside. Now every time I talk about this. Here's what fitness fanatics think and then what they say to me. So they think, oh, an hour of activity. I'm going to burn calories. This makes lots of sense. Why do I got to do it outside? It's raining. It's snowing. It's hot. Like, why don't I just do it on the treadmill? Here's why. It's not about the activity. That's nice bonus. But the reality is the, it's really about being outside. What about when it's hot or cold or raining? That's going to give you even more value. We now know that challenging your body's ability to deal with the elements strengthens your body's ability to adapt in a general way. So what does that mean? It's a hormetic stress. When you're, when, you're, when you're lifting weights or working out, what you're asking your body to do is to adapt, right? If your body didn't adapt, 
uh, it would be a waste of time to work out. Like I'm not getting any stronger no matter what I do. Like, okay, why am I doing this? Right. Or I'm not strengthening my body or I'm not burning body fat. Right. All of those are adaptations. Your body builds muscle because it's adapting to stress. Your body burns body fat because it's adapting to a particular stimulus. Same thing with improving performance. Your body's ability to handle the elements, to get comfortable in the elements, is an adaptation system. And if that is weak, just like if any other adaptation system in your body is weak, it's going to affect all the other adaptation systems. Now, we have, because modern life is so comfortable, because we have air conditioning, heating, we have, comp we have atrophied this particular adaptation system. And this isn't just my theory, okay? Look at the studies, for example, that are done on, on hot and cold therapy. Look at the studies done on saunas. Do you know that regular sauna use, which is just heat, okay? Just heat by itself. Regular sauna use decreases all cause mortality by something like 20 or 30%, which is insane. This is regardless of other lifestyle factors. Just that alone. Cold therapy has some all the other interesting properties. Not to mention the benefit of going out and getting the sun. Mm -hmm. Not not to mention the benefit of getting fresh air. All the and we know this instinctively. You know, how many times have you said to yourself like I need to get some fresh air, right? What the hell does that mean? What's the difference between the air outside and the air inside? Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. So going outside, bearing the elements for an hour tremendous benefits for health and downstream muscle building fat loss. Don't don't you think that's the why this this trend has happened in the last decade or so of the hot cold totally. plunges and the saunas and the ice baths and the cryotherapy You've been removed from it. Right. And I, and and don't you think that a lot of the research and studies that are showing all the benefits has a lot to do with that we've now, we now don't do that anymore? Yes. Mm -hmm. I bet you 100 years ago you wouldn't see the same benefits that we see today. I bet you if we did research on people 100, 200, 300 years no, ago. No, why would they do that when that's day that's their day to day? Yeah, every yeah, yeah every day they were they, they were fighting the elements like that and so their body had to adapt, had to get strong to handle all that where we've been in this cush lifestyle for the last century that we haven't been challenged this way. So then out comes all this research to show, oh my God, look how beneficial the cold plunge is. Look how beneficial the, the hot sun is. Well, I think the reason why that those things are so beneficial today mm -hmm. is mainly because we've Dude, neglected it yeah, for so no, long. We live in flat, like sterilized environments that don't challenge us at all because we want to make our life easier, right? That's been the whole goal with progress is to make, you know, our lives less challenging. And when we remove the challenge, we, we're not stimulating the body like we need to. And we're not, you know, we're breathing recycled air. We're not getting sunlight. We're not getting a lot of these things that, that spark and stimulate the body in a certain way that's going to help to protect us when we actually get challenged so when, whenever you find yourself feeling like oh my god i, I I'm, I'm carrying all this stress but now all of a sudden I'm, I'm facing a new variable you know how do i respond to that if i'm not training myself to respond yeah. to it properly by the way it's not just like t training your mental capacity to handle heat or handle cold or handle the elements your body actually adapts to be able to handle these things a lot better like i'll never forget as a kid my, you know, at the time he was in his 70s, 70 something year old grandfather visiting from Sicily. He's, you know, he's obviously old and he's a different old than you see, you know, today. He's a, he's an old, like poor Sicilian old. So he's been around, he's worked hard, right? He comes, comes to visit and he goes to work with my dad and I, this is when I would help my dad in the summers and we're mixing cement in the summer and it's hot and I'm 15 years old. I work out, I got, you know, I'm spry or whatever and I'm dying and my grandfather's whistling while he's mixing cement. And I'm like, this guy is made of something completely different. I remember also spending the night uh, in their home up in Sicily with no air conditioning. He didn't grow up with air conditioning. And it was, these are cement houses. It was sweltering and he's smoking a cigarette inside. And I'm just dying. I can't believe it, right? I also know I've had friends who've come from different parts of the country. I had a friend who came from Minnesota and she would, in, in 62 or 63 degree weather, which for a Californian is freezing, okay? 63 degrees here in San Jose. I'm wearing a sweater and sweats. She was in shorts and a tank top. And I remember asking her, I'm like, How, aren't you cold? And he goes, she's like, it's warm outside. She goes, you have no idea. I grew up in, in Minnesota. Yeah. My body's adapted to the cold. So your body adapts to these types of things. You can train this in your body. And believe me, when you train your body in a way to adapt to these things, 
all your other adaptation systems start to follow suit. So your body ability to build muscle, burn body fat, get stronger, actually becomes reinforced and strengthened. So go outside for an hour regardless of the elements. Now, I want to make a point uh, before we lay out and give the exactly what these seven days are going to look like for the audience, because I have a feeling that this episode will be one of the ones that go viral. Just these types of topics, where, especially since we're giving away a complete workout. This is a free MAPS program. Right. So doing. since we're doing that, I, I know that this is going to reach a lot of people that have no idea who the hell Mind Pump is. So if you've been listening for a long time, I don't feel I need to convince or explain everything that we just went through. But what I know is if you've just, you come across this, someone shares this, this is the first time you've heard us talk about so that the, the biggest mistake or the number one mistake that will be made with this program is wanting to do more. Mm -hmm. You're going to want, you are going to, oh, I feel good today. So I'm, and I'm going to do this now. Or, oh, Oh, they, they had a hiking day. I don't feel like going and doing that. I'm going to do another one of those yeah, Mondays. Or what if I do a five-hour hike? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. The idea of this was if we were going to construct a routine that you are training seven days, an hour at a time, every single day, what type of stuff would I build for a client of mine for optimal results? This is for somebody who's trying to build the most amount of muscle, burn the most amount of body fat, or just be as healthy as they possibly can, strength and longevity-wise. This is what that routine would look like. So do not fool yourself and go, oh, well, I'm more this person, so I'm going to do more of those things, or I'm mm -hmm. less of this person, so I'm going to eliminate those one thing. Trust the process, follow this routine for at least 30 days, and watch what happens. All right, so here's the breakdown, and if you're listening on the podcast, you can write this down. Luckily for you people watching on YouTube, we're going to flash this workout up on the screen, so you can literally screenshot it. Can we put it in the notes, and Andrew, we're gonna, too? Yeah, we, that's a good idea. Let's put yeah, it in can the we, notes. We'll, save, we'll save all these in the notes, so someone can literally just kind of copy and paste. Yeah, and you'll, this is literally, we're writing out the workout for you. Okay, so Monday and Thursday are your heavy workouts. Here's what your Monday workout looks like, okay? You're going to start out with barbell squats, then you're going to go to barbell bench press, then you're going to go to barbell rows, barbell overhead press, Curls, dumbbell or barbell is fine. Skull crushers, slow sit-ups, and calf raises. All of these are for three sets. All of them are for six to 12 reps. The Thursday workout, so I'm skipping a couple days. That's because we're going to have other workouts in between, but we're talking about the heavy compound lift workouts, right? The Thursday workout is going to look like this. It's going to start with deadlifts. Then you're going to go to incline press, pull-ups, Arnold press, hammer curls, dips, your reverse crunch, and then your calf raise. Again, three sets six to 12 reps. The mobility workout, which you're going to follow the Prime Pro webinar, right? So you're going to do this particular mobility workout. And I think we have the mobility workout set up for Saturday, uh, if you were to follow this exactly, is literally go to primeprowebinar.com and have Adam coach you through the workout. After you follow that for two or three workouts, you'll probably have a good idea on how to do it um, on your own. But I highly suggest you have him coach you because mobility is probably the most complicated or hard to understand of all these And this can workouts. be done in the mm -hmm. gym and watching it on your phone, or this can be doing, done on your television at home. You so. don't need equipment for this. That's right. You could do this just on the floor, right? The pump workout. So these are the ones where you're trying to get a pump, 15 to 20 reps, more isolation exercises. Here's Tuesday's pump workout. You start with lunges. You go to dumbbell flies, dumbbell pullovers, then you go to lateral raises, band curls, band press downs, and planks. By the way, resistance bands are excellent for pump workouts. They provide very little damage to the body in comparison to weights or machines, but they still send a very good muscle building signal. Strength athletes use them all the time exactly because of this. I put bands as the trigger session workouts in MAPS Anabolic, which is very uh, popular, specifically because of what I just said minimal damage, you still send a muscle building signal and you get a great pump. Friday is the next, is the other pump workout, right? Here are your exercises. Your single leg toe touch, band flies, band rows, band pull up out, uh, pull apart, excuse me, band curls, band press downs, and then band side chops, right? For your core. Here's your functional day. So that was the one that we talked about earlier where you're focusing on the movement. Your functional day is going to be Wednesday. You're going to do three sets of each of these exercises. The repetitions can be anywhere between five to 10. Let's go with Turkish get-ups, windmills, Cossack squats, and then overhead carries. You're going to carry for about 25 to 35 steps, okay? Overhead carry, you put basically a weight over your head, 
extend your arms and do it, uh, you know, down for 25, 35 steps and then back. We have videos for all this on, on our YouTube channel, I believe. I don't yes. think there's any exercise that we've, that we've said. Everything yet. that we're saying. should all be on YouTube. It's all going to be there, right? And then here's your go outside. Uh, I don't need to break this down for you. Go for a walk or a hike, regardless of the weather. In fact, the more harsh the weather is, of course, be safe. Don't be stupid. So if it's a hurricane, please don't listen to what we said and go to, <laughs> go walk out in a hurricane. Uh, be smart. Cover yourself up, whatever, whatever you need to do. But if the weather's bad or whatever, that's actually part of the value of this. And you're going to do that on Sunday. So that's your Sunday workout. So two things I want to add that will help the audience out that, that may not know this or if you're first time finding us. Uh, one of the best ways to find out information um, that we've already covered, which everything we've talked about in here we've covered, is that when you're on the YouTube channel and or Google, you literally put mind pump and then what you have a question about. So if there's an exercise you're unfamiliar with, you don't know the form and technique, put mind pump, then that exercise It'll populate on YouTube. The second question that I know is going to get asked by a lot of people is, how do I choose my weight? I did a video a year or two ago about how to choose the right weight for you. We'll do the, we'll do it. Maybe Andrew can post it up right away so somebody uh, or you guys can see that and, and switch over to the link on that. If that's a, a question for you, search that to help you figure out where to start. But I, one thing I want to say about all of this. When you're doing this form, technique, start lighter first, get good at it before you start to scale up the weight. Yeah, thanks yep. for saying that. Okay, real quick overview. Monday, heavy workout. Tuesday, pump workout. Wednesday, functional workout. Thursday, heavy workout again. Friday, pump workout again. Saturday, mobility workout. Sunday, outside workout. By the way, this is the first time we've really created a free program and giving it away mm -hmm. on an episode. So it obviously costs you nothing. Copy it. It's we, we're gonna you're gonna see it on the video. You can screenshot it, write it out, follow it. This is your seven day a week. Share this routine. with your friends and family. You know, obviously, the more people you can get involved, the better you have accountability wise and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you're gonna get great results. Look, if you like this information and you want more, you want to learn more from Mind Pump. That's free. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have more guides, more information there that can help you with all of your fitness goals and desires. Also, you can find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.